Hello everyone, and welcome. In today's video, we explore a powerful new article by Dr. Turki Faisal al-Rashid, recently published in Arab News, titled, Harmonizing Heritage, Innovation in Duria's Oases. The article takes us deep into Duria's living landscape, where history, nature, and progress converge. With a special focus on Wadi Hanifa, Dr. al-Rashid reveals how ancient oases are not relics of the past, but powerful models for sustainable development today. Drawing on insights from the Duria Global Seminar 2025, the piece bridges environmental wisdom with modern innovation, aligning heritage with Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030. Before we begin, a word about the author. Dr. Turki Faisal al-Rashid is a Saudi businessman, academic, and respected thought leader. He serves as an adjunct professor at the University of Arizona and is the founder of Golden Grass, Inc., bringing together scholarship, leadership, and real-world experience. He is also the author of the forthcoming book, Saudi Arabia, Transformation, Uncertainty, and Sustainability, which examines the kingdom's evolving economic and social landscape amid global change, offering thoughtful insights into resilience, development, and long-term sustainability. Let's begin. You know, deep in the Arabian Peninsula, something pretty revolutionary is happening. Saudi Arabia, a nation so often defined by its endless deserts and, of course, its oil wealth, is actually looking back, way back to its ancient lifelines, its oases, to figure out a path for a sustainable future. Today, we're going to dig into how these amazing green pockets of life are becoming the actual blueprints for tomorrow. All right, so here's the plan. We're going to start with the ancient power of these oases, and then we'll zoom in on the really dramatic story of one particular wadi, how it collapsed, and then had this incredible rebirth. Then we'll see how that one story blew up to become the model for a nationwide green revolution. We'll look at the huge progress, but also the very real challenges. And finally, we'll pull back and ask a big question. Could this desert nation be creating a whole new kind of oasis for the entire world? So our story really kicks off at the recent Daria Global Seminar. And the big idea there wasn't just about admiring history. Nope. It was about digging into the past to find real answers for the future. The central question on everyone's mind was, how can these ancient pockets of life help shape a completely new national identity for the 21st century? This quote from the governor of al Asa, it's the perfect starting point. It just nails it. Because in this part of the world, nature has never been just some pretty background scenery. It's the thread that's literally woven into the fabric of their identity. It's the secret to their resilience, and the whole reason civilizations could even survive, let alone thrive, here for thousands of years. And we've got to be super clear about what an oasis really is. It's not just a pretty picture on a postcard. You should think of them more like the original smart cities of the desert. These weren't just rest stops, not at all. They were bustling hubs, the critical infrastructure that powered ancient economies, sparked farming revolutions, and became these cultural melting pots where empires were born. Okay, so let's zoom in on one specific lifeline that really tells this whole story, Wadi Hanifa. This is the historic artery that flows right through Duria and the capital, Riyadh. And believe me, this valley is way more than just a line on a map. It's kind of like the kingdom's beating heart. I mean, the history here is just staggering. We're talking millennia, starting with the Banu Hanifa tribe setting up shop. This very same valley later became the cradle for the very first Saudi state back in the 18th century. And get this, even as recently as the 1970s, it was a booming ecological sanctuary, just this explosion of life and biodiversity right in the middle of this arid landscape. And this is where the human ingenuity is just off the charts. The secret sauce for the valley's fertility was something called the Fallage system. Just try to picture these vast hidden networks of underground channels, all perfectly engineered to use nothing but gravity to deliver water. This wasn't just irrigation, it was ancient, sustainable tech at its absolute finest, a masterpiece that literally made the desert bloom. But you know, this incredible story took a really dark turn. In the 20th century, the story of Wadi Hanifa became this powerful tale of ecological loss, but also, thankfully, of redemption. The contrast here is just wow. It's night and day. On the left, you've got the 1970s, Unchecked growth turned this historic lifeline into a toxic sewer. It was choked with garbage, a total scar on the landscape. But then you look to the right and you see today, a breathtaking transformation. It's now a global showcase for green urban design, a living sanctuary where nature is actually coming back. 
And this comeback story didn't just happen by magic. It was a massive, visionary project. A $200 million investment kicked things off back in 2001, restoring 85 kilometers of the valley. They planted half a million trees, they brought the wetlands back to life, and the effort was so incredible, it ended up winning one of the most prestigious awards in architecture, the Aga Khan Award. And this quote just illustrates the core philosophy perfectly. See, the goal wasn't about conquering nature, it was about harmonizing with it. It captures this idea that human ambition and the natural world don't have to be enemies. They can, and they really should, work together. So how in the world does one restored valley spark a whole national movement? Well, the success of Wadi Hanifa became way more than just a local win. It became the proof of concept, the actual blueprint for Saudi Arabia's massive national strategy, Vision 2030. And the scale of this ambition? It's almost hard to wrap your head around. We are talking about a $1 trillion commitment to green infrastructure. The ultimate goal? To hit net zero emissions by 2060. Now, for a nation built on oil, this isn't just some policy change. It is a monumental shift for their entire economy. And listen, this isn't just talk. The money is already moving. In 2025 alone, Saudi Arabia issued $12 billion in green finance. Just look at this chart. That purple slice? That's two-thirds of the entire regional market. This shows they are serious about funding this transition. So what does a trillion dollars actually get you? Well, it's tied to some incredibly ambitious goals. The big headliner is planting 10 billion trees. I mean, can you even picture that? But it also includes aggressive targets for slashing CO2, scaling up carbon capture technology, and making a huge bet on becoming a global leader in green hydrogen. So yeah, these aren't just fuzzy promises. These are the hard numbers they're going to be judged on. Okay, but let's be real. A pivot this huge is never simple. This grand vision comes with enormous challenges and some very real dangers that have to be navigated really, really carefully. This table lays out the core tension perfectly. On one side, you've got these massive headwinds, an economy that still depends heavily on oil and, well, one of the most water-scarce climates on the planet. But on the other side, you see the specific, targeted solutions they're using for each problem, pushing hard to diversify the economy, using super-efficient drip irrigation, and investing a ton in solar power desalination. And there it is again, that core philosophy, this time right from the development plan itself, building with it, not just on it. It's a simple phrase, but it's a profound difference that guides their whole approach, treating nature like a partner in design, not an obstacle to overcome. And this philosophy gets tangible results. Just take the $63 billion Diria Master Plan. By planting millions of native trees right along the wadi, they're basically creating a natural air conditioner. The expected result? A cooling effect of 5 degrees Celsius. In a region that faces extreme heat, that's not a small detail. That's a critical strategy for adapting to a changing climate. So, let's zoom out. What does all this mean beyond Saudi Arabia's borders? Well, these efforts are strategically designed to reposition the kingdom on the world stage, to transform it from an oil superpower into a leader in sustainability. And their strategy for building this global influence has a lot of moving parts. It's about blending ancient wisdom with modern tech, like AI. It's about empowering women to take the lead in sustainable heritage management. And it's about taking a lead role internationally, from protecting huge marine ecosystems to building new green alliances across the globe. Of course, when an oil giant says it's going green, it's going to attract skepticism. You hear the term greenwashing thrown around. But the counterargument to that rests on tangible, measurable progress. For instance, when you protect 30% of your marine territory, an action praised by the UN, that's a verifiable achievement that's a lot harder to dismiss as just PR. And so, we'll leave you with this powerful question that was posed at the seminar. It's really an invitation that goes way beyond national borders. It reframes this massive project not just as one country's plan, but as a shared global quest to listen to the lessons of the past to build a more sustainable future for every single one of us. Conclusion. As we conclude this discussion, we return to the vision expressed by Dr. Turkey Faisal Al-Rashid. A vision grounded in clarity, innovation, and a deep commitment to building a more stable and interconnected future. For the full article, you'll find the link in the description below, or you can visit Arab News at www.arabnews.com. A complete overview of the Daria Global Seminar 2025 is also available through the link in the description. To learn more about the author and his work, 
visit www.tfrashid.org. If this video sparked new ideas or insights, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more conversations like this. Thank you for watching. Stay informed, stay curious, and we'll see you in the next video.